All right, I have these two elm logs that uh, I got from my coworker Scott. So thanks, Scott. Shout out to Scott for that. Uh, I got them, I suppose, maybe a month and a half ago, and with other projects and whatnot, they've been, I mean, literally cooking in these plastic bags here. I I didn't want to um, just leave them out so that it would crack and the wood's too nice. So I put them in these bags plastic bags and you can see probably there's a lot of moisture on the inside of the bag so um, I don't know uh, I don't think it doesn't look like they crack but um, I'm sure the ends are getting kind of moldy but that's all right we're gonna cut them off anyway so my project for today is to uh, get the chainsaw out and uh, cut these logs up take out the pith uh, cut them into some bowl blanks and then uh, see what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bags off these things and we'll see uh, see how bad they actually are. So let me get that get those off of there. All right, I got them out of the bag and they don't seem to be uh, too worse for wear. There's a little bit of uh, mold on the ends and a little bit growing on the bark, but not too much. This, this one here on this side has some kind of, uh, I don't know, something growing. I don't know if the tree's trying to regrow or what it is, but it's... Uh, it's kind of an odd thing. This one on this side is the one I like because this is the pit. This is the center of the pit. Uh, and I got a big area here on this side that I can uh, the bowl blank out of. This this side's fairly flat, so I think it was part where the tree grew, were branched off and then maybe a couple of branches. So I get a nice bowl blank out of this side. Uh, this one, the pit is right about there. Um, so we can get a few bl blanks out of um, each side of that we'll take those cut those out of there um, overall the they didn't crack uh, they're still be in pretty decent shape so we're gonna go ahead and get the chainsaw and uh, cut them up into bowl blanks okay well we're ready to uh, make a cut on this piece what I did was uh, I marked up from the pith on both sides and I, I snapped the chalk line uh, going across it's actually goes through the log kind of sideways. It doesn't actually go straight. The pit is actually further over on this side than it is on the other side. So so I have a chalk line snapped across the top. I got it on a piece of MDF and my work made. I got some a couple of pieces of uh, boards and MDF stuck on either side there and clamped down so that it uh, doesn't uh, roll or whatever. So we're going to take the chainsaw and slice down through here and, and um, uh, see if we can cut this into two pieces. Well, as you can tell by my chainsaw technique or lack of technique, this is not something that I do very often. So uh, we got it almost uh, split in half. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. And uh, once I get it all uh, done, I'll turn it back on. All right, it's been a week since we uh, chainsawed our elm logs into uh, bowl blanks. Uh, I didn't show any more of the chainsaw work because one, uh, it would have been boring as I'll get out. And two, uh, my chainsaw technique is, leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, my little electric saw, the, the bar on it isn't very wide, so it tends to drift when you're cutting, particularly when you're cutting with the, with the grain. I think it's better suited for like cross cuts of logs and whatnot. But, yeah, it worked out all right. We got uh, four, blank, four blanks out of it. Um, this one is about eight inches. Um, in diameter. This one is about 10. Uh, and these two in the back are 12. Um, and then in addition, I took and cut a couple of pieces of uh, off of the side of the pith, which was, which was right here. I cut this off. So this is 
basically quarter sawn type uh, wood on there. I got two of those. Um, I'll do something with them after they dry. I don't know. You know, I'll make pin blanks out of them or bottle stoppers or something. Or if they check real bad, uh, they'll go in the trash, I guess. Um, this this 10 inch one and the 8 inch one don't are probably going to turn all right. They're they need a lot to be turned down. After I um, roughed them out last week, I stuck them back into a couple of um, plastic bags just to keep them from drying out, and they are certainly wet, so uh, starting to get a little mold on the on the side of one of them. Uh, actually, all of them are starting to get a little mold on there, which will all turn off. These in the back I got some issues with because this thing is way out of... Um, way out of balance. Uh, there's a lot more wood on this side of this log than there is on this one. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Somehow I'm going to have to remove that and try to get that uh, more balanced. The back one, the big one in the back, this one, is bad but not quite so bad. Uh, my lathe is um, not that heavy, so if I put something on there that's really out of balance like that, the thing's going to rock and roll all over the garage and that's not going to work. Uh, it also, it's variable speed, but the slowest speed on it is about 500 RPM. So if I had a really, truly variable speed one, I could turn it down to 50 or something RPM. That'd probably be a lot better, but I don't. So um, we'll have to make do. We'll probably start with one of the smaller ones, just since it's been a while since I turned any green wood. So we'll start with one of the, the smaller blanks and perfect our technique a little bit, and then we'll... Um, move on to the bigger ones. My goal is to get these all rough turned uh, today so that they can start going in some, uh, start drying, which will take them uh, quite some time. So the next thing we'll do is we'll get ready to, to we'll drill some holes in them, get them this, one of the smaller ones mounted on the screw chuck on the lathe and see if we can uh, actually turn these into something. Okay, I've taken the smallest bowl blank and I drilled a hole in it, um, the same size that would match my uh, screw chuck, which is over here on the, on the lathe. Um, I got it in my widest set of jaws, so uh, what we do is we screw this onto the screw chuck. Um, I measured the inside diameter of this <clears throat> set of jaws here, and, it, and it's about three and a quarter when they're almost closed, so I want to... I want to turn my tenon on the bottom, or maybe three and three eighths or something like that. So when I reverse it, I can grip it and have some uh, have some room to hold it. So what we do is we take this uh, piece here and we screw it onto the screw chuck. Get it on there, nice and nice and tight. There we go. And then we bring the tail stock up and get that tightened down as tight as we can get it. We want to hold this thing between centers so it's uh, a little less, uh, more safe. I should have backed that out a little bit, but that's all right. There we go, we got that tightened up, we got that tight, that's tight. Unlock the headstock. Now this is the moment of truth. These things are, uh, I said, that when I put that big one on there, it's not going to be balanced at all. So hopefully the lathe doesn't bounce around too much. So let's stand out of the way, stand out of the, uh, the danger zone and give it a start and see what happens. <laughs> All right, well that was on the lowest speed and it seems to be balanced fairly well as much as we can expect from uh, something like this. So I got my um, I got my bowl gouge all sharpened up so that we're uh, nice and sharp when we uh, start to turn this. So.
we got our blank turned around. We turned a tenon on the bottom that'll fit into our chuck when we when we reverse the bow. Uh, we got a little bit of bark left on there. I took a little while to get all the bark off of it. The blank wasn't exactly centered, so. Anyway, so we got that all, all taken care of. So this part down here is done, and what we need to do is put a little bit of a shape on the side of this bowl, which is where my artistic talent goes to goes away. So come off in there. Here's the shavings that come off in there, a little curly Q type thing. They're really, uh, they're really a lot of fun. Of course, it's fun. My shirt's all wet now from the water coming out. Trying not to make all my bowls look like flower pots, but at the end of the day, they kind of tend to come out that way, I think. So uh, let's move our tool rest in a little bit. We can take a little bit more off right in this area and um, maybe shape it up a little bit better. I don't think I'm going to take any more off the outside, uh, otherwise my 8-inch bowl will turn into a 4-inch bowl and then all I'll have is a bunch of chips on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this thing around, put it in the chuck, and then we'll uh, hollow out the inside. Alright, I've uh, reversed our little bowl and I put it in the chuck and I got the uh, tailstock hold on, hold on against it. Um, we can do that for a while till we get to the center here. Um, what I want to do is take some off the edge. Um, the goal is to generally is to leave 10% of the width of the bowl, uh, leave that 10% as the thickness, so that when it dries you still have some something to turn when you come back. And I'm sure it's no longer 8 inches, so let's see how wide it actually is. Well, we're down to about 7, so um, we need to leave about 3 quarters to an inch. A thickness on this on this bowl but first I want to clean this bottom up and so we do have this pith here but it actually just goes from hopefully you can I don't know if you can see it that well but there's a little pith from that branch that actually goes from here to there so I think a lot of that might actually uh, turn off eventually but we're going to go ahead and, and uh, start turning some of it stand out of the way when we start it
okay, we got this bottom flat, and you can see that that, that little knot there is, uh, or little pith is not that far into the, into the wood, so I think we'll be all right with that. I'm going to take and mark off the better part of an inch for the uh, width of our, or the thickness of our bowl, so that's our goal then, is to leave leave that much if you can see it I'm not quite sure our goal is to leave this much of the thickness right here and then just hollow out this inside down here so let's get a little bit started on that Well, you can see we got a lot of wood to remove, and my bowl gouts need to be sharpened. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. And uh, once I get it mostly hollowed out, I'll come back and show you the final uh, final touch-ups. All right. Well, here's one rough turn. Um, like I said, what we'll do is we'll uh, put that into a brown paper shopping bag. Maybe put a few chips in there with it. Put it up on the shelf and let it sit. Before I do all that, I'll weigh it and see how much it uh, see how much it weighs. Uh, and then I, every now and then I'll get it and take it out and, <clears throat> and weigh it. And uh, when it stops losing weight, then uh, I'll know it's uh, dry and reached an equilibrium. Uh, and then we can go ahead and put it back on the lathe and finish turning it. But um, so that's pretty much it. We got the uh, the wall thickness is about an inch, not quite an inch, uh, which I said is. The goal is 10% of the diameter of the bowl. Uh, I got my tenon on the bottom. I got my center, which we're going to use to when we put it back on. I mean, you can see this is wet. Uh, the water's just coming out of it. So um, that's one, uh, three more to go. And since that one took me like you know a couple hours to finish, um, I better get cracking, or I'm not going to get uh, get these things done. So uh, once I get them all rough turned, I'll come back and show them to you. All right, well, we got the big boy mounted on the lathe here now. This is the largest piece that I had. Actually, uh, it was fairly well balanced. I didn't have to do anything to it. It, it, um, it When I turned it on, it didn't make the lathe jump or anything, so we got it set on its lowest speed. But we're going to go ahead and see if we can't uh, turn this thing around. And I want to keep it as big as I can keep it for bowl-wise, so we'll... We'll see, but uh, I'll show a little bit of this. Is this just I thought maybe a little, little bit interesting based on the size? So here we go. Okay, 
Well, now all of a sudden it wants to rattle, so I'll have to do something with it. Um, this is one, one big log. I it's about as big as my lathe can handle. I couldn't put a bigger log on there, I don't think, than, uh, than that. So, um, and all this, I probably could use a bigger bowl gouge. So this is a half-inch gouge. that could probably use a five-inch or something, something larger for this roughing out. But um, if I take it slow and, and uh, be careful, I'll get this thing turned around, and then um, I'll come back and show you when we're hollowing it or turning the outside. All right, we're back with our big bowl. I've been working on it. Um, it's still got some bark down here on the bottom. This, this bark is really hard to get off. It's really a, a jumpy, uh, makes your tool jump. So we have to finish turning that off, put a tenon on the bottom. I've been trying to work my way up to the top here. So let's turn it some more and see what we can, uh, see what we can finish up here. I got to get the rest of this bark off down here so I can put a tenon on this thing. So let's just a tool rest a little bit. Um, there we go. Let's, let's see if we can clean some of this up now. Still got some bark on there, so I hate doing it, but I guess I'll have to go back to this end and try and get that rest of that off of there so I can make my tenon. So when I get it turned around, we'll come back for the hollowing part. All right, I got this turned around. I got it mounted in the chuck. We're going to use the easy wood tool. That's what I've been using to rough the insides of these out. Uh, this bowl's 11 inches, so we want the sidewall to be a little over an inch. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get our face shield and get geared up and start turning the inside of this bowl. I want this to be a little bit wider than an inch, so I'm just going to take my pencil and make a mark on there. What I did was I drilled a hole in the center to the depth that I wanted the bowl to be. So I, I drilled it about four and a half inches, so that's how much we have to remove. So we got a little bit more to go. I may need to rotate my cutter. It's getting pretty dull, actually. All right, well, I moved the cutter on my easy wood tool, so we should be able to finish this up here.
Well, I pretty much think the camera is in the uh, the chip zone, so I think I'll shut this off and uh, move everything out of the way. All right, well, here's our four bowl blanks. Um, that was quite the process. It took me like all day to do it. Here's the eight inch one. Uh, this, we turned earlier. This was the one that was uh, 10 inch or so. Uh, turned out pretty good. Uh, this was one of the big, big pieces. The one I said I, would, I had balance issues with. Uh, well, by the time I got done with it, um, most of it wound up on the shop floor. So uh, maybe it'll make a nice little candy dish or something when it's finally done. Uh, this is the big one. Um, it's about 11 inches outside diameter and, I don't know, five and a half or six inches tall. Uh, that's a pretty big, substantial bowl. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take in, um, first I'm going to weigh them. Um, like I already weighed this one. I know it weighs um, 11, 1,145 grams. So I know what that is. I'm going to take a, you know, just a grocery bag. Uh, and I might wrap a little craft paper around these. i got a roll of craft paper. Maybe I'll wrap a little craft paper around them and throw into some chips or whatever, maybe into the bag. And then I'll put this, uh, put this in a bag, record the date and the, uh, the weight on the outside of the bag, and then stick them up on a shelf and forget about them for six months or so. Uh, maybe get them down, uh, see this is uh, June, maybe get them down in the fall, like maybe Thanksgiving time or something. Um, I'll probably get it down before that and weigh it. Uh, like I said, once it stops losing weight, the, um, then I can go ahead and turn them. So maybe by uh, Christmas time or January or something, these will be uh, ready to ready to finish turn. Hopefully they're not uh, they don't crack. I did take care and take the pith out of each one of them, which is usually where it cracks. Um, so we'll. Uh, We'll see. They were a lot of fun, but boy, is that that is a lot of work um, to all you turners that like that turn green wood regularly. I know the Sam, the Wyoming wood turner, and others. Uh, my hats off to you, man. That that is uh, that is a lot of work. Um, in addition to be a lot of work, uh, it makes a rather large mess underneath the lathe. So. I'm not sure who's going to clean that up, but I guess it's going to be me. So anyway, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and don't forget to subscribe.